Good evening, Akron fans. This is Shadow Fury CC3 bringing you an exhibition match because the last couple tournament matches have not yet been played. The semifinals that I'm kind of been holding up are going to be played this weekend, and then afterwards we should be able to finish off the rest of the tournament because Gold actually frequents the channel fairly frequently, and Cybernetic Pony and Chitin is the one that needs to be done. So once that's done, then Gold and Cybernetic Pony can go to and the winner of Cybernetic Pony and Chitin. I just don't know who's won yet. I'm sorry, Chitin. Anyway, the winner of Cybernetic Pony versus Chitin will be fighting God for the finals afterwards. But then I'll have semifinals matches to cast. In the meantime, however, I figured I might as well do a couple exhibition matches just because I don't want to get completely out of practice with Akron. And also because there has been a new patch, and like I said in my patch notes video, there's a big economy change. It's a subtle one, but it's a big one, and I want to see how that plays out. So we'll start out with a match on Rooftop Showdown between Monkuki and Sharadan. So Rooftop Showdown is a map we have seen a great deal of because it's a very popular map. It's kind of small, it's fairly straightforward, very quick rush through the middle, resources the bottom. Actually, it's not super straightforward because the resources are pretty open. It's a very open and exposed map. Anyway, Monkuki is going for Vekir while Sharadan is... Let's see what he's going for. Also Vekir. Both players are going for Vekir in this match. So Vekir Mirror on Rooftop Showdown. I expect there to be... Actually, I'm not sure what to expect. Like I said, the economy changes. It changes a few things. Normally, though, Vekir versus Vekir is going to involve a Zion Pulsar, Zion Turcher opening. Because Zion Turchers kind of beat Zion Pulses, but Zion Pulses can maybe get around. I don't know. Probably a lot of Zion Turchers. I expect that to exist. However, it looks like... Monkey is going to just start off by scouting with everything. Shardan, on the other hand, doing the same. Interesting, both players are sending their entire starting Veer line over to their opponent's base. Though, in Shardan's case, he's building up an RP first. But still, it's an odd start. I will give it that much. It is definitely a start that I don't expect a whole lot of acre. I mean, this is probably just something that's going to be... Temporary. Anyway, the units are meeting up with each other. It's probably going to be the one iteration, and then it'll echo out. The Zion Veer will probably stay at home. Over, it looks like, no, both players appear to be trying to completely destroy their opponent's Veer class units before anything happens. This, this is opening posturing. This is very likely to be opening posturing. I doubt this is going to actually have any long-term effect on the game. However, that being said, Monkuki did win the opening posturing, having put a Zion Veer up front to take out the Teth Veer first. And getting rid of the Shinvir afterwards. That was nice positioning on his part. Not sure how much of that was intentional, but definitely worked. Now, Shardon is... Well, he is a bit further back in the past. Like I said, I'm expecting he's going to be moving back some of these units. Where There is. There's the Zionvir at home. So he's keeping the Zionvir at home. Monkuki, on the other hand, let's see what he's going to be up to. Monkuki not changing anything. He's going. He's just continuing to march, and that is not surprising. He wants to see what Shardon's up to, see what he has built up. And I think Shardon is not even bothering with this fight. It looks like he is, like I said, he's moving back. He is letting this fight be a loss and then keeping his Zion Veer at home. I mean, I like I said, probably posturing. But no, it looks like Shardon is doing the opposite moving forward. Oh, I see. He is setting up his positioning to be as advantageous as Monkuki's is, or was. That looks like he meant to... Un I think he meant to undo that move order. I don't believe that was actually intentional, but you know what? It might have been. It just looked kind of weird. It looked like he was... One of those One of those orders was meant to be undone. Either moving the Zion Veer in or getting the Zion Veer out of there was meant to be undone. One of the two. We'll figure out based on what happens later on. Monkuki, on the other hand, has not actually sent anything back to base. He does, in fact, have... His RP setup, looking like he's going to be going for something more along the lines of... Well, vehicles fairly early. I'm expecting he's going to be building a depot off here, but... I don't know why he hasn't built more Zion Veer. This is really confusing. I mean, maybe he's not paying attention here, but he really should be building more Veer class units at home. Another Zion Veer at home just to build more RPs. Shardon... Okay, his Zion Veer is at home. That was what he meant to do. He wants it at home. He did not want to go out with the army. That makes sense. Keep up the economy. Don't bother worrying about pressure. Because, honestly, if the pressure comes to the base, he can just build another Zion V or maybe a foundation. It'll be fine. It'll work. He'll live. Monkuki, on the other hand, does not have any economy coming up. He has this Zion V and Teth Veer, which... Sorry, Teth Veer and Shin Veer, which are winning their fight, but at the same time... 
he's kind of alone. Getting more and more Q Plasma. An odd choice. I'm expecting he's going to go for vehicles fairly soon. Probably going to get a Depot and then get Zion Pulsers. I mean, at this point, I can't imagine he'd be able to afford Zion Churches easily. But not even building a foundation yet. He has enough Q Plasma for... It's 40 Q Plasma, 48 Q Plasma now. Enough for a Depot. Sharadan, on the other hand, has a foundation. Has enough resources. He's playing normally. He's playing as you'd expect. He's playing such that you'd actually have... Well, you'd actually have a way of living. And, like I said, Zion Veer able to repair up, able to avoid getting too heavily damaged. Actually, the Shin Veer cannot out-damage the foundation. The Zion Veer is fine. Monkuki has got to echo this out. I don't know why he hasn't echoed this out yet or built another Zion Veer or what. This is just an odd case. I really don't understand what Monkuki is trying to do. Sharadan, on the other hand, makes perfect sense. What Sharadan is trying to do is normal. He's defending against an early rush and going from there. Monkuki, on the other hand, looks like he's trying to set up something, but possibly not paying attention at home. Okay, now getting a proxy up. Shardan did move back, and Monkuki trying to get proxy foundations up instead. Probably not a proxy depot. I can't imagine him going for that. That'd be a little bit too risky. Especially since the Zion Veer is dead, and he can't really afford anything else useful. But auto defense with foundation. That is what he's going for. A pretty powerful foundation rush, but... Not powerful enough. Shinveer and Foundation still not able to beat Zionveer. That's just not going to happen. Once again, it just doesn't work that way. I'm really not sure what exactly Monkuki has been trying to accomplish. Like I said, I can sort of see the logic, but at the same time, the Foundation's... Oh, actually, you know what? No, that... This will work. What am I thinking? Completely was not noticing that. Monkuki building up his Foundations into buildings means they aren't healing anything. Monkuki needs to build another Foundation... And Sharna with his foundations, at this point, kind of at a stalemate, but the fact that the foundations have gone away from Monkuki might pose a problem. And it looks like Monkuki is building yet another foundation, another pair of foundations, in fact. And that will definitely help out. But a Bastion coming up for Sharadan. Sorry, for Monkuki building that foundation. Sharadan is getting the extra foundations for healing. Monkuki is the one doing the rush. I might have gotten their names confused just now. I honestly have a hard time remembering what it is that I just said in the last few seconds. Sometimes. Not always. Anyway, Shardon is about the same point in time, and Monkuki is doing a very, very big job in this. Actually, Shardon building up bastions of his own to try to counterattack. The Shinvir are long since dead, but Zionvir trying to get out of there and successfully able to do so just barely thanks to Foundation healing. No depots coming up yet for for Shardon. I think Shardon is going to be building up. No, he's not. He is not building up anything. He's building more foundations. He's building more bastions. But he does not have a depot yet. He had one, but it got cancelled because the foundation was destroyed. He never bothered... Or actually, he cancelled himself to have more foundations to beat up the Bastions with. And I think at this point, there is going to be some hope for... Well, maybe a little bit of hope for Sharadan. Monkuki is running low on resources. He doesn't have anything building up more RPs. He's only two LCRPs. And the Bastions are starting to lose their steam. If you notice, the Bastions here for Sharadon, sorry, for Monkuki have no support foundations. Well, Sharadons do. And, of course, Sharadons kind of got a home base advantage. And also, the fact is, Sharadon does have a lot more money. Like, Sharadon is considerably better off. Monkuki can build up a few more support foundations, but at this point, it's not going to work out too well. Sharadon basically has the advantage. All he needs to do right now is build another foundation, and he has the money for it. Build a depot, and he's building more RPs as well, I should point out. To the south, he is building more resource processors, which means he can build a depot, and then from there he can just go. And he has definitely successfully gotten rid of Monkuki's expansion later on. Or not expansion, his proxy later on. And Shardon is going to be going from here, basically to... E well, not quite take the game easily, because Monkuki trying to convert into an economy game. Building more Zion Veer, getting all of his RPs on LC, trying to get himself out of the rut he kind of put himself into. I mean, to be fair, he did force Shardon to build three Bastions, which aren't cheap. They aren't super expensive, but they're still foundations that could have been depots and aerial control centers. That being said, I think Monkuki and Shardon built the same number of Bastions between them. So there isn't really that big of an advantage for Monkuki. In fact, Shardon really has taken the lead in this. I mean, he's taken far... He has, like, three times as many LCRP... Possibly four times as many LCRPs. He has actual Q Plasma RPs that are dedicated to it. And Monkuki just trying to rebuild himself into the game. Six minutes in the game, he only has four LCRPs. While Monkuki has a grand total of nine. I mean, that is 
massively in Mo in Shroud and I was like, getting confused. I should probably add a feature that allows you to switch which side the players are on because it is kind of confusing that Shardon on the right is on the left, Maku on the left is on the right. But regardless, Shardon is the one who is ahead from here. Monkuki, on the other hand, is very much behind. This is a massive uphill battle for Monkuki. I really don't know how much of a chance he has. At this point, it's Shardon's game to lose. It very much is. Because Monkuki. His proxy failed. He built as many bastions as his opponent. Basically, the economy cost was equal between them, except that Monkuki was not building RPs behind this, while Shardan was. And I think his Monkuki probably could have built RPs behind this. Like, made this lighter by only having one, maybe two bastions, and then built RPs behind it. At this point, he's having a hard conversion time, and his only real saving grace is the fact that Shardan is building up He's a little bit paranoid. He is building up his depot and aerial control center a little bit slowly. But even then, he can very easily get it. All he needs to do is just build anything. He's got Halcyon class. It looks like he's going for Zion Halcyons. I think his only saving grace is the fact that Shardon decided to just go for economy. Just push heavy economy. First Zion Halcyon coming up. Eight minute mark. Zion Halcyon is going to be out for Shardon. Monkuki, on the other hand, doesn't even have a depot yet. Building up his own economy, trying to get himself in a position where he could build a depot. But that is not going to happen anytime soon. While Shardon has his depot, has his Zion Halcyon, should be up by the 9-minute mark. And, well, should be up by the 9-minute mark. Not sure exactly where. Shinvir is coming in to scout out, but why do I not see a Zion Halcyon? This is bizarre. The Zion Halcyon should have been built by now. That being said, Shardon does have a massive economic advantage. He can just pump out units from here, and needs to. That's the thing. Shardon needs to pump out units because if he doesn't basically capitalize on the fact that Monkuki has nothing, then he is going to lose. And it looks like Shardon trying to do the same thing Monkuki did a little bit more safely, but still putting in a bunch of proxy foundations. He's got the LZ for him. I mean, Shardon could basically make a carpet of foundations, and that's what he's doing, making a carpet of foundations into Monkuki's base, and he can afford this. No problem, he can afford this. Monkuki just now making a depot. This is at the 1029 mark. Jumping back 20 seconds to the 1020 mark. Nothing really different from Monkuki. He is jumping back a little bit. Jumping back a minute down from where Shardon is. And jumping back once again 20 seconds. He's trying to figure out when he can possibly push this out. Could build a foundation right now, but the thing is, is that he is having to choose between foundations and resource processors, while Shardon, on the other hand, is floating heavily. He's safe from any economic harassment, any any attempts at undermining Shardon is completely resilient to that. Admittedly, he is starting to spend quite a bit of money now getting Zion Halcyons, but those Zion Halcyons are basically just going to tear it apart. He should be getting a skip teleport, though, I would think. He's I'm not sure why he isn't doing that. He could afford it. He might be just trying to pump out as many Zion Halcyons as possible, not worrying about it too much. They are fairly expensive, like 133.60 or something like that. 168.72. Sorry, 133.60 is... Something completely different. Okay, 168.72 or so. That is fairly expensive. And there's the carpet of foundations back at the, I should say, 11.06 mark. We are a minute up from when Monkuki is. Monkuki about a minute down. He is not really able to do too much. He has a depot. He has a Zion Veer. His best hope is probably to build a Zion Pulsar and try to tear apart the foundations as faster than they're being built. But even then, the depots could take a while to build up. I mean, depots take about, I think, 50 seconds to build. He's got to wait, and that wait is probably going to be it. I mean, like I said, that failed rush at the start did not do him any favors. And Shardon coming in with the Zion Halcyons, not skip teleporting them, just walking them in. Enough foundations to heal them up. They're basically indestructible. At this point, even a Zion Pulsar won't help. And the only reason I thought that might be halfway a hope is because, well, they do deal a fair amount of damage, but nope, that Zion Veer's down. That Chest Veer's also down. Monkuki jumping back a minute from here. He did exactly that, however, a minute down, he is getting Zion Pulsars, using them to try to get rid of the foundations, and that's going to be tough. The foundations, of course, healing each other, but three Zion Pulsars able to outdamage the foundations, despite the healing. It's going to be tough. It's going to be an uphill battle, but he is pumping out Zion Pulsars like there's no tomorrow, which is apt, because barring that, there won't be. If they don't work out, then... Well, okay, it's an exhibition match. It's not like it's going to be Monkuki out of a tournament or anything, but that is going to be game. If he doesn't Managed to push this back, and getting rid of as many foundations as he can, not a bad idea. Really needs to target those foundations. The Zion Halcyons are dealing damage, though. Tough call. Zion Halcyons dealing the 
majority of the damage, but the foundations are basically keeping them alive. Zion pulses, however, are trying to out damage the foundation healing, and they are succeeding. But it looks like a couple of them have been shifted over to destroy foundations. Two on foundation duty, four on Zion housing duty. This is actually not even micromanaged, it's just the AI is handling this, the unit control AI. And Zion pulses are doing a valiant job. And Mongoogie actually staying in the game longer than I would have expected, thanks to the Zion pulsers. Really quick construction of that he does now have a very strong economy. I should point out, compared to Shardan, Shardan, on the other hand, does not have much in his main base. He only has about six running liquid crystal resource processors. That's it. So, right now, Monkuki is actually ahead in terms of income. He's not ahead in terms of resources, and certainly not ahead in terms of the actual amount of units he has. But in terms of resources, he's ahead, and his depot is down! He has the foundations to rebuild that, but his depot is still down. The Zion Pulsers are, however, up and are dealing quite a lot of damage to Zion Halcyons. I should point out, Zion Pulsers are considerably more cost-effective than Zion Halcyons for damage. Zion Halcyons, however, are much tougher. And as a result, are going to be a lot more damaging when it comes to getting hit. Like, under fire, Zion Halcyons will last longer than Zion Pulsers, just because their firepower is not being reduced as a group as quickly. Like, Zion Pulsers, because they'd each be weaker, they die individually, and thus their group firepower would decrease faster. That being said, Monkuki has pushed this back and somewhat stabilized the game. Not quite well enough. He does have an economy advantage in the sense that he has more income. However, his main base has also dried up. He only has two LCRPs compared to Shardan's four, and double-checking from Shardan's point of view. Yeah, Shardan has four. He's not going to have them for too long. At least the ones at the bottom. They are going to need to be moved. And... Shardan now getting around to moving his RPs from his main base over to the center. So Shardan has massive map control. Shardan is well ahead of here. Monkuki's only hope is the fact that Zion Pulsers basically out damage Zion Halcyons for cost. And if Shardan were to push all the Zion Halcyons together, he'd probably still win. Honestly. It's just that one at a time compared to all these Zion Pulses, even compared to three Zion Pulses, Zion Halcyons going to lose. More foundations coming up for Shardan, however. He is going to be getting back on this horse, trying to get foundations in. Car foundation carpet once again, but won't be as effective. He lost a lot of LC building that first foundation carpet. That would have been about 650 LC, which would be enough to build four Zion Halcyons. Still, I mean, that was really a clutch move by Monkuki to stay in the game, however. And Monkuki looks like he's moving out. I can kind of see the logic here. But Shardan, on the other hand, is... He is scouting around, trying to figure out where Monkuki is. A little bit surprised he's doing that with Zion Halcyons. He is just pumping out Zion Halcyons, not building any Zion Pulsers, not building any Shin Turtles or anything, or Teth Turtles in case of an Air Switch. Oh, Air Switch is unlikely to happen. But Teth Turtles would... Sorry, Shin Turtles would basically have no issues. Like, there's nothing anti-air right now. There could be, obviously, Teth Pulsers, but Shin Turtles would just be able to tear apart the Zion Pulsers to help out tear them apart. Not to mention be able to fly around the map faster. Because these Zion Halcyons... They're going pretty quick. They're going at an okay clip, but they're still taking a while to scout around the map. Harassment's going to be much slower as a result. And Monkuki is moving around. He's teleporting all of his RPs around. And at this point, Monkuki and Shardan both have gate tech. Well, Monkuki's really managed to stabilize the match. Like I said, it is Shardan's game to lose, but I think he might have done that by overfocusing on Zion Halcyons. And Zion Pulsers really do counter Zion Halcyons for cost. Not obviously for numbers, like, three Zion Halcyons will beat three Zion Pulsers, no problem, but in terms of cost, like, Zion Halcyons are 65-15, compared to 168-72. I mean, you can basically get three Zion Pulsers for the cost of a Zion Halcyon, and three Zion Pulsers will beat one Zion Halcyon, and they actually have larger splash radius, so... I suppose... I mean, it's about even. I mean, Zion Halcyon also has very large splash radius, so... Basically, at this point, Monkuki and Shardan are even for army. Not for economy, mind you, Shardan is definitely ahead there. At least in terms of resources invested, I should say. But in Shardan, because he has map control, that really is what's putting him ahead. He's not got anything to worry about as far as losing map control. Monkuki is not moving out to harass. He is trying to defend. He's trying to keep his base alive. He's not actually moving to defend any of these RPs. And the RPs of the south have been destroyed, which is the main reason why Shardan has an economic advantage. Of course, Shardan can push that by his map control. But, yeah. This is... And, uh, okay, apparently the stream might not be offline. The stream not online? That, that can't be right. The stream has got to be online. Sorry, excuse me for one second. 
I apologize to the YouTube viewers who are going to be watching this afterwards, but I am quite concerned that my stream is not loading. Uh, hmm. How bizarre. My stream is not... My stream is not offline. Yeah, my, I'm streaming as far as I know. Oh boy, this is not good at all. Okay, I'm not sure why the stream is not working. But I'm just going to keep on going as much. So for YouTube, you're in luck. You're taking priority at the moment. Anyway, back to the game. So, Shardan is... Looks like Monkey's going for the kill. Sorry, Shardan's going for the kill. Monkey does have a slipgate, however, and he is possibly going to chrono port. A slipgate, proxy slipgate for Shardan has been placed. Monkey, a bit surprised he has not gone for a chrono port, but it looks like he might be just doing that now. Not sure what's going on with that, but yeah, he looks like he is going for exactly that. I don't know. Okay, I think Twitch might just be screwing up. Oh, what the heck? Oh, audio is off for some reason. Okay, weird. Sorry about that. Anyway, back to the game. That has been a corner point of Zion Pulsar. Of Zion Pulsar, yes. They are corner pointing back. They are trying to destroy Shardon's base. And this is pretty much not what I expected at all. But Chrono Porting is like that. Chrono Porting is definitely like that. And it looks like Shardan might actually be getting around this. Like, Monkuki has come in. I mean, Shardan's coming in. He is destroying Monkuki's base. He is doing a lot of damage to it. But not before that Chrono Port happens. And Monkuki, his base, he does have the Slipgate. He is going to probably Chrono Port himself. And that will definitely... Sorry, Shardan's going to Chrono Port himself. That will definitely help. No, was that... That was a Teleport. That was not a Chrono Port at all. Oh, no, that was a Chrono Port. Never mind. That exactly was a Chrono Port, and that should get rid of the Zion Pulses. I think that would give Shard on the game. And that is going to be... No, well, that's... I think Shard on has this. Monkuki, however, did deal a lot of damage before that jump back, and that Slipgate was actually destroyed. In... No, no, it wasn't. No, looks like the Slipgate Foundation did not die before that Chrono Port arrival happens. Let's... Check. The Chrono Port arrival has not yet occurred. Shardon is still dealing damage. The Zion Halcyons do what they can. And more Zion Halcyons manage to Chrono Port back. Save the Foundation with the Slipgate. This is the Foundation. That's what matters. It did not die. Shardon has won this game. I mean, I realize both of them have Chrono Porting. And obviously there's a lot that can be done when both have Chrono Porting. But Shardon has won this game. Like, there basically isn't a whole lot that Monkey can do. He might try to Chrono Port back, but his Slipgate's going to be going down. His Slipgate's going down in the Unplayable Past. Chrono Porting back will throw him into Paradox Country, which honestly is his best bet. 50% chance to win is better than none. Well, okay, not really 50%. If he knows how to do it, it'll be deterministically in his favor, but that's tough to do under pressure. Monkuki, however, is a very strong player. He might be able to do that. That being said, I think this is game. No, I know this is game. This is game. That was a very valiant effort by Monkuki. I thought he might have had a chance, but he did not get rid of this foundation. This foundation with the Slipgate did not go down before the Zion Pulsar Force did. And because of that, Shardon was able to Chrono Port back and eliminate Monkuki's entire base. Although it looks like... Wait, what? Interesting. It looks like... Okay, we're on the next iteration here. Monkuki actually does have a slightly better position. We are looking at Monkuki's point of view. We are at the 16-minute mark, and... Shardan once again attacking using superior vision and range. And it looks like this is... Well, this is going to be Shardan's last... Sorry, Monkey's last stand. Shardan... Okay, from Shardan's point of view, has won. Monkey from his point of view, jumping up again. I think Monkey's going to throw in the towel at this point. For some reason, teleporting his buildings back into his base. I'm not sure exactly what the motivation is for this. Once the green time wave comes, he'll have absolutely no chance. Even I mean, he has no chance now. So, I think Monku, you really should just throw in the towel. I'm not sure what his motivation is to stay alive, or stay in the game, but Shardan, just
just checking around the timeline, making sure there isn't anything around, and no, there isn't. Monkey has basically lost. The green timer was his only chance that he has. Shardan double checking the unplayable past, and nothing is there. There we go. Monkey throws in the towel. Shardan wins the game, and my Twitch viewers are unfortunately left in the cold. I apologize for that, but it'll be on YouTube at any rate. So I'll be back. Well, I guess I will be back in a moment. Not that you can hear me. With hopefully the stream working properly. So watch the next video because this is, can only be watched on YouTube. So, yeah, I'll be on the next video where I will actually be on Twitch. For now, stay tuned. <laughs>